have you ever wanted to guest on a podcast like this one that you're listening to right now? Well, you can. You can definitely do this by visiting a website called Podmatch, where you can sign up and be available for all different types of podcasts that you can guest on. Or you can even search for a podcast and say, I want to, I want to guest on your podcast. I think we'd be a good match. So if you want to do this, you can go to our unique link, which is joinpodmatch.com forward slash reality. And you can sign up and do exactly that. And you can find us and you can guest on our podcast. So again, that unique link is www.joinpodmatch.com. That's J-O-I-N-P-O-D-M-A-T-C-H dot com forward slash reality, R-E-A-L-I-T-E-A, and you can be a guest on our podcast. Reality Tea Times 2, the podcast where we discuss all the trash reality TV we love to hate. I'm Janika, and today we're going to be discussing The Other Way. So, before we get into all of that, we have some stuff to do at the top of the episode. So, we have an announcement, quick announcement. So, Family Chantel is coming very soon. Um, I'm recording this on a Friday, so it's going to be here in just a few days. I actually am going to have Letitia, who is a part of our um, Sister Wives bonus episodes. She is going to be on the Family Chantel episodes actual, you know, she'll be a part of a conversation. So because of my schedule and her schedule, we're probably going to be recording this on a weekend. So that means that you'll most likely get the Family Chantel episodes the day the new episodes are airing. So you won't be getting that until the Monday that it's airing. Um, so I do want to just let everybody know off the, off the top of the episode, if there is ever a time where we can do it earlier, then we'll do it earlier. But chances are like you still won't get it until Monday. Um, so that's probably what will happen. I will try to see if I can get it to you again earlier. Um, but we'll, we'll see how things go. Each weekend will be different. So we'll, we'll see. Um, but I wouldn't expect it until the, um, until the Monday, you'll probably get it, you know, in the morning or, you know, right at noon is usually noon Eastern time is usually when I post episodes. So you'll probably get it around that time. So yeah, that's the plan. I wanted to be able to have someone on because again, like, you know, obviously I think a lot of you know that Ava isn't always here. It's usually just me. Um, so I did want to have somebody on to discuss the show. And I know Letitia really does watch Family Chantel. We've talked about the show before. And I think this is a show that we're okay to push back a little bit. So that's what's going to happen. So the new Family Chantel episodes start on the uh, 6th, something like that, on Monday, and you will get the episodes about a week later. So that's basically it. Golden Bachelor you'll be getting soon. I'm probably going to be doubling up the episodes, uh, this week's episode and last week's episode, 
I have watched the episode from last week. So we, uh, we're going to get that to you very soon. So I think that's basically it for announcements. Uh, Hawk Oz. One thing that I can tell you is that, uh, Emily and Kobe are having baby number three. Congratulations. I mean, I don't know. I love them pillow talk. Um, I've always loved Kobe, so it's not a problem. <laughs> um, if you like them on pillow talk, but you all still live at home. You also live with your parents with what we're told one bathroom. <laughs> Which I don't fully believe, honestly, but yeah, I, 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 mm. <laughs> I think if you're still living at home, you shouldn't be popping out children. That's personally me. Um, I know he works, but there's only so much their money can stretch, you know? Anyway, that's all I'm going to say. Congratulations. <laughs> anyway, um, so let's do some memes. So at the time that I'm actually recording this, I have not posted the memes yet. I will post them after recording. Um, so here we go. First meme. Johan, if it's not that big of a deal, why not tell her that you were going to make a withdrawal? Good question. Next one. It's a high standard to not want to sleep with spiders and all manner of creepy crawlers. Listen, <laughs> first, okay, first of all, the lizard doesn't bother me. I, I'm fine with the lizard. I'm okay with it. I don't want it in my bed, but I'm okay with it. Chances are it wants to stay as far away from the humans as it is anyway, so it's fine. The spiders? Fuck that shit, I'm out. I don't want to sleep with no fucking spiders. I hate spiders especially if they look that fucking big since when do they shed their skin you know what we'll get to it <laughs> and uh that is it so again those memes will be posted i'll also post uh to our socials the pregnancy announcement if you haven't seen it so i will do that as well um but that's it let's get into the reason that we're here because we i have a lot to say for this episode. Um, The Other Way, Season 5, Episode 17. Ugh, big Bank Theory. Fuck sakes. Anyway, let's continue. So TJ and Kimberly. So it's 4.20 in the morning, y'all. And they just had 20 hours of celebrations. Jesus Christ. So <laughs> Parents are leaving India um, later that day, actually, so they're not even going to get any sleep. Hopefully, they can sleep on the plane comfortably enough. Jeez. Um, so, Kimberly says she's not ready for them to leave, but she just feels like she's going to have a hard time um, adjusting to life in India, life with his family. She feels like they've just put band-aids over the situations. I don't know, because she eventually is like, Yash, I don't know if he put a band-aid over the situation. Like, I really think he thinks, like, we're good here. So I hope she thinks, like, we're good here. Anyway, TJ says his goodbyes to her parents, but then leaves them alone to give them some time to speak to each other. Um, Her mom, because let's be real, that's, that is her mother. That is her mom. Her mom says, listen. Be open, be respectful, but also don't let anyone um, ruin your happiness, you know? So, and, you know, her dad kind of says just, you know, be patient. You know? She's like, I'm working on it. <laughs> and then they have a group hug, and she... Like I said before, it feels like there's just a band-aid on the problems. So next thing, her parents leave and she goes to find TJ. And then um, they go back to the house. And guess what, guys? There's another ritual. 
the rituals. I want to know when do the rituals stop? Because even like, okay, we're, we're going to get to it, but it feels like there's just one thing after another. And I'm not dissing it. I'm not, I'm not cause I think this is highly fascinating. I, we've never seen this before. Um, it's not like we haven't had an Indian couple before, but we've never seen this before. So it's really interesting to see. And, um, I'm just like, wow, this is never, it's never ending. Um, but I mean, obviously all things come to an end, right? But yeah. So they do have another ritual. Um, so before they are even able to go back inside the house, we see them both eating something. I have no clue what this is that they're eating. No one tells us. Then, um, his mom performs something called Arati. And it's basically like she has like this bowl. I'm not sure. I can't remember if there was like a smoke or something. There might have been. And she kind of does it. I think it was in a counterclock um direction. Um I think that's the way it went. And she just does this in a counterclock direction in front of them before they're able to enter inside the house. Kim starts laughing and I'm thinking, why are you laughing? Um, but anyway, um, basically, uh, DJ tells us that doing this is to basically let God know that in the home, that a new woman is entering the home. So now they're able to go in and TJ tells us in Hinduism, their God is in the kitchen. I never knew this. Um, so it, and that explains everything. I, quick tangent. That explains a lot because I found not, not, not really interesting. I guess I never really thought about it because I think like y'all just gross anyways, but we all remember with, um, Jenny and Submit, their kitchen area, I mean, their whole house was absolutely disgusting, but their kitchen area is even worse. It was so disgusting, not clean. Like no one looked like they washed a dish or wiped down the counter or anything like that. And when his mom went in there, she's like, the fuck is this? That just kind of goes to show that I don't know if he says Hinduism. I know there's different sects. Um, so he says Hinduism. I don't know if he means that generally speaking, or if he's more referring to his sect, but if I am to take what he said and take that as, okay, generally speaking, y'all like disrespecting God and your kitchen was disgusting. Like, first of all, a keep your house clean as much as you possibly can. But, um, yeah, that, that, that's, that's what made me think about that. I'm like, huh. So the, the most holiest places in your home, Jenny and Zemet, or was supposed to be the most holiest place in your home, because I don't know if she necessarily converted, but he's Hindu from my memory. <laughs> anyway, so yes, the kitchen is the most holiest place. And so because of this, it is also the purest place in the home. Kim has not been allowed in the kitchen because he says that only family is allowed in the kitchen. Kim was not family prior to them getting married. Now they're married. Now she's family. So now she's allowed in the kitchen. You see where this is going? <laughs> he says there is a strict restriction. Um, not allowed anyone else but family, like I said. Um... So we see that he's doing a prayer to the goddess Radha. I think I said that right. Um, and Kim wants to learn about his culture, but she does feel very lost. She kind of refers to herself as a zombie, you know, trying to figure all that out. And that's fair. That's, that's, that's fair. Um, 
I want to know the first thing, you know? The only knowledge I have is from a grade 11 religion class that I did when I was 17, 16, 17. That was a long time ago. Like, I have no knowledge, to be totally honest with you. And I feel like any person who hasn't practiced that has no knowledge. So TJ says, you will have to cook a meal um, for the family. And she also has to play this game, which was technically another ritual. And it's called Search for the Ring. (laughs) But um, you're tired, he says, so you can sleep first. Thank you so much, sir, for letting her sleep when she's been awake for like 24 hours. Jeez. Whoa. Um, so they are in their place now, and he says they have to do a, a mantra while um, entering, which they do. And then she just falls on top of the, of the bed and is done. So she will be going to bed, but he is not, guys, because there's another ritual that he has to do. Um, he says, like, I have stuff to do, and like I said, he has that ritual, so he has to go to the temple, for, and he has to go there and talk to Ganesha before he is allowed to sleep in the same bed with her. And he has to ask permission to have sex with his wife. (laughs) Let's let's point that out right now. He needs to ask permission to have sex with his wife. Uh, Okay, I get it. I mean, it is the religion. This is something they do. So I understand. But I'm telling you right now, uh, I don't think he has asked permission before having sex with his wife. I'm just saying. I- I'm just saying. I- I'm sure he's had sex with her prior to that. I don't think they have done a thing since being married. But they'd have definitely before. <laughs> anyway, I get it. It's fine. Everyone has their thing. Um, everyone has their ritual. Everyone has their religion's different. It's just very, it's interesting. I'm, I'm taking it all in. Um, so both her and, so he, okay, so he says that both of them are now heads of the house. I think alongside, no, sorry, not him. Kimberly and his mom are both heads of the house because he, um, I think it has something to do with, he says like, they're the ones that, you know, I don't think she says the word feed us or anything like that, but like conversation starters and stuff like that. Like that's kind of what he's saying. He's aiming at, which I'm perfectly fine. I'm perfectly fine with a matriarchal head of house. I'm fine with it. But there are holes in what he just said. But anyways, she will be learning her responsibilities um, as time goes on, which we do see on the next time on the show. But yeah, that is it for TJ and Kimberly. Next, let's do Sarper and Jekina. They're short and quick, so I'm going to be breaking these up from because we have a lot to say about some of these couples and not so much about others. So, yeah, Sarper and Jekina. So, Jariah has left. Great. But she did see her before she left, and Jariah still doesn't trust him. I, I don't either. I get it. She kind of isn't happy about it. What did she expect? Did she expect that her sister was actually going to come in with a good, like, post aside, I don't give a shit about the post, but, like, did you think, like, she was going to come into this and think, like, all happy and shit about it? Like, no, of course not, because take the social media aspects out of this. Honey, he weighs you every day and gave you a goal weight, and you excuse that away. Just that alone. 
There's other problematic things about this guy, but that's just one thing. And you really think she was going to come into this and be like, all smiles and giggles and like him after? No way. You're like, come on. Like, think with your head a little bit. Um, but anyway, she says, just be happy for me. No, fuck you. So he wants to make her happy. So he has an idea. He's going to give her a gift. And it's going to be a new bed. Okay. So he asks, what is the result of the visit with Shariah? Not good, bitch. Not good, bitch. Like, seriously. Um, then the stupid post comes back up again because he didn't actually do the fucking post. And he says, oh, I forgot. You didn't remind me. Then he does the post. I, I don't care. I really don't give a shit. Because this is... I, first of all, I really hate talking about these people. I really do. I don't like talking about Starbucks and Shekinah. They're fake. I don't want to talk about them. But they aren't anything serious. They're problematic, so I can't not talk about them. So I just do it very quickly. <laughs> anyway, move on. Um, he was... He mentions that he was trying to like fight posting anything, but they won. I give up. That's a really great way to think about things when it comes to your relationship. I was trying to fight it, but they won, so I give up. Ugh. Um, anyway, so then they start talking about how much she comes in one time. Why am I why? I don't care. I don't want to know. I don't want to know that she's has multiple orgasms. Like I don't care. This is so disgusting. Um, not disgusting in that sense. Like, great. It's it's lovely that she's able to experience that. I have, but it's it's fine. I I don't have an issue with that. It is. I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> Maybe because I just don't like them, but it was just so fucking random. I think that's maybe it. It was so random that maybe it felt scripted to me. So I'm just like, what the fuck are you talking about? Um, so then he says that he counts how many times. Wait, <laughs> he's counting. He's first of all, a number one, sir. You never know when a woman is actually having an orgasm, okay? I don't care. We can fake that shit. But <laughs> that aside, um, you why are you counting? Why why are you counting? I, I mean, okay. The full disclosure, maybe this is a little TMI, but full disclosure. Um When I had my first time with my ex-husband, our first time together, I I won't go into how long that lasted for, but to say for a number of hours that I could not do now, but did that, it was fine, great, lovely, multiple times, multiple times, and I did count. But after the first, like, two hours, <laughs> hour even, I, I stopped counting. He sure as hell was not counting. He waited for me to do the final number. I'm like, I don't even know. <laughs> so, like, but he wasn't the one counting. Because you're not, as far as I'm concerned, the reason why this feels so foreign to me, I'm sure, anyone listening to this who has sex is thinking you're so into the moment that your brain goes bye bye out of this whole scenario and usually takes a little bit to come back afterwards and i mean me personally i am not thinking a lot at all I would like to think that my boyfriend also is not thinking a whole lot. You'd hope. But 
But I also think the last thing people are doing is counting. Like you have to be really in tune with your brain to do. And I wouldn't be surprised that he is. But like, I think everything's a numbers game for him. I really do. I really do think it's a numbers game for him. But this is just another conquest. So since he can't continue his conquest of how many women he slept with, he's not going to start con- doing the conquest of how many times going to make her come. And I'm going to record it in my brain. He's a weird guy. It's really weird. I don't know. Anyway. So anyways, yeah, he says he's counting. And then he calls her a multiple orgasmic bitch. That is it. That is all. I have nothing more to say. So we're done with them. Moving on. Brendan and Mary. So Mary feels awkward with his mom being there. Yeah, because you're awkward. (laughs) She feels that she is not going to talk to her or like his mom's not going to talk to her. Why don't you try talking to her, Mary? Oh, let me see. Because like you have the mental mental capacity of a two-year-old. Okay. And that has nothing to do with her mental health. Like I'm not coming at that. I am a from come from a family of mental illness. Um so I'm not even going on to that, but she at least the people in my family are are so aware of the mental illness that they may have or others may have or whatever. She is just not aware, and that's the part that gets to me, and she's just not aware of it. She knows that she's not okay, but she's just not, it's weird. Anyways, let's move on. Um, so Mary talks about the comments that his mom made about the poverty, which I knew she would, which I don't blame her for because it was not necessary for his mom to say anything about the poverty in the Philippines. It just, it just wasn't even again. I I don't know. I can't speak to that because I'm not from there, but I don't know. She's just acting like, you know, poverty isn't bad in the States. Poverty is, poverty is poverty. It's just poverty is different in each country. And the first thing you don't fucking talk about is the poverty in a country in front of the woman who's lived there her whole life. It's just in bad, bad form. I, we talked about that in the last episode, but yeah. So now they're at the house and um, she meets Mary's family. Seems, it was an awkward meeting, but you know, it seems to go as well as like can go, I guess. Um, so now we're going to do a tour of the house. His mom is pleasantly surprised to see the state of the home. She basically admits like she was expecting a hut because a hut, because that's what she saw coming in. And she's like, no, this is an actual house. Again, that just, this is my fun. Um, anyway, so she will be sleeping in their room because there's going to be less spiders and creepy crawlers in, his, in their room than there is in the rest of the house. So he says that um, his mom doesn't like bugs. I feel like a lot of people don't. Except for Stadler. You know what? This would be bug paradise for Stadler. Really and truly. She'd be all over it. She's like, no, leave me alone in the room. I'm fine. <laughs> um... But so we see his mom is making him check for the the room to see if there's any bugs in it. He checks and he's like, no, there's nothing here. There's nothing here. And then he checks under the TV set and he says, okay, nothing here either. Oh, wait, what's this? It's an exoskeleton of a spider. And she's like, huh? She's like, where is it then? He's like, it's not here anymore. He's, he's like, 
no, like, where is it? Cause like it's somewhere, <laughs> it's probably somewhere else now. So I get that, but what his mom does say, and I have to agree with her is I didn't know spiders shed their skin. And he's like, well, this one does. <laughs> this is my new spider shed their skin. I didn't know mm-hmm. that. I didn't know. Okay. Maybe not all forms of spiders shed their skin. And I really don't want to Google to find out which ones do. Cause ew. And, but apparently the spiders are just shed on their skin all willy fucking nilly. And I'm like thinking to myself, if there's a spider in my house, is it just going to start shedding its skin? Ooh. Anyway. Um. So, because his mom is freaking out about this, Mary is giggling in the background with her grandma, and she, um, she didn't know, so she's like, he's like, so I thought after all of this, Brandon's like, okay, I'm gonna leave you alone to, you know, and, um, the face his mom is making as he's leaving the room, (laughs) fucking priceless, um, so he leaves to go get her stuff. And then both Mary and Brandon go back in. And Mary says that, um, back into the room. And Mary said that there's a spider. And Brandon kills this huge fucking spider with his shoe. Okay. Um, and his mom's like, where was it? And he's like, behind the bed. So. So then Brandon and Mary leave to go talk. And Brandon says, I think she was a little shocked by the other homes. Um, and Mary says, but there's nothing wrong with the other homes. And again, to her, no, there's nothing wrong because that is all she knows. I will say for someone like me or someone like his mom who has never seen that in person before, it can be a shock for sure. But I feel like, I guess the show is still a learning channel, guys, because it, it, it makes you aware of not everywhere looks like my home. I'm fortunate to have a brick home that, you know, nine times out of ten doesn't have a huge creepy crawlies in it. Um, so we're used to what we're used to. And that applies to her as well. She's used to what she's used to. And what she's used to are these homes. To her, that's normal. So to have someone come into her home, her space, and say, the poverty line is so bad, and the houses are barely houses, or whatever the fuck she said. And that's hurtful for Mary. Because the one thing that she did say is, I'm worried about her being in the Philippines and judging my home. She didn't just mean the home she physically lives in. She means her home. So, you know, we were off to a great start with that. So Brandon says, I'm not saying that there is anything wrong, but she does have higher standards. That's all it is. Um, and then Mary says, um, but that's why I'm scared to talk to her. Um, and she isn't talking to me. And again, this is kind of just shows the child that these two children having a child is beyond me right now because this is like, okay, but Mary, you might be scared. I think anyone is who's met family is scared to meet family. It is totally understandable, but you are getting married to her son. You are, um, having his child who is going to be her grandchild. You need to put on your girl, your big girl panties and talk to her. And you know what? She might pleasantly surprise you, but at least in a general sense, she's approachable. Does she like Mary? No, she doesn't like Mary, but I think she also has every right to not like Mary under the circumstances. I think things would have gone very differently if things were different with their relationship on on a whole. And that is what's not the case. So yeah, I, I, I think she needs to understand that. 
but she doesn't because she's 23 and not a mother, not yet. So it, it's, um, it's upsetting, honestly, because it's just like, what do you expect? You literally said that he couldn't hang out with his sister because she's a woman. That's borderline insanity. So I get why his mother is just a little standoffish at the moment because first of all, she's probably tired, traveled, but you left a bad taste in her mouth from the get go. So I don't, I don't know. Brandon says, okay, but to be fair, you can put more of an effort in. And again, I think this is fair. He's absolutely correct. But, you know, Mary doesn't want to hear that because Mary says, but I, I don't know her. So get to know her. And she says, you know, when you told us to hug, I was going to, I was about to, but then she changed the subject. And he says, okay, but I didn't see that effort. I didn't see you actually trying to hug her. And she's like, no, I did. And he's like, I didn't see it though. Um, and she defends herself, obviously. And he says, listen, I'm not um, trying to defend her. And Mary immediately says, but you have been defending her from the beginning. <sighs> I And this is a thing that drives me so nuts about certain situations is when you have someone telling you to be on my side, no matter what, and that is his mom, who you can see and tell he was trying to rebuild their relationship. It's not fair because he wants to be on, sure he wants to be on your side, and make sure you feel protected. But he maybe doesn't always agree with everything you're saying. And maybe there's instances where he wants to defend his mother. And he should be able to say what he feels when he feels. As long as it's not outlandish. Which he's never come across as coming off that way. But I don't know. It's unfair to him. It's so unfair. But anyway, um, yeah, anyway, she just wants him to be on her side and he says, I am, but, um, she can't feel that. He says, I will try to help, uh, have a conversation get started between you. But of course, like he can only do that so much Like you guys got to take the reins a little bit. Anyway, then his mom Uh, called him over because she saw a baby lizard. The lizard was literally crawling away, like, up into the ceiling, like, and he doesn't want to go anywhere near you. He's, he's fine. Anyway, Brandon just hopes that there will be no fighting, especially on their wedding day. So we'll see how things go, but that's it for Brandon and Mary. Do you want to spice up your love life? Well, you can make that happen by going to Love Shop, where you can get sorts of different things, whether it's for both you and your partner, or just for yourself. For solo play, you can get things, all types of vibrators, maybe more kinky type toys, or you can just buy what every person may need like lingerie or protection or even just something to make it a little more fun like games or novelty things you can do all of this by going to love shop and you can use our unique coupon code reality t2 to get 10 percent on anything your hearts desire so that's love shop dot C-A-L-O-V-E-S-H-O-P 
ca and use our unique coupon code reality2 that's r e a l i t e a and the number 2 so let's talk holly and wayne again not much here to talk about um so wayne is going to be going to work and it's been 3 months now that they've been there so they've been married for about that. And um, her mom has now left. Um, she left the week before. And Holly says that he's working a lot because they need the money. Because as we know, he has lots of debt. Um, so because of this, though, she's alone a lot. And then we see her calling her mom. And she says hi to her dog. Uh, Holly does. And she tells her mom that she is not used to being alone here. She doesn't really have anybody that she can talk to. She's not able to make any friends. She says, usually you can make friends when you're working, but I can't work. His sister doesn't live nearby. Um, so she's really struggling with the feeling of having South Africa feel like home. Um, let you know. Yeah, I, I get it. You know. Um, she likes to be social and she can't do that. Um, her mom says that she does worry, um, about Holly because she herself didn't feel safe when she was there. And, um, Holly doesn't think that South Africa would ever feel like home. So we're kind of, we're kind of seeing something again, very similar to what happened with Ronald and Tiffany differences. She was pregnant, <laughs> but we're we're seeing um, we're seeing that happening here. Um, it'd be nice to see someone stay in South Africa and and, and you know try. But like, I was even thinking, like, okay, is there an option to move? You know, somewhere else. That's um, in South Africa. That's not in. Joburg, like, I don't know, like, obviously, a move like that, like, a huge relocation like that would be, um, still a difficult thing to do, but maybe that's something you guys could plan towards, so maybe, you know, she's out of Joburg, from what I'm understanding, it's them that does the, um, the blackouts, I'm not sure if anywhere else in South Africa is doing it, so maybe if, she, if that's part of the problem and and feeling the safe um, feeling and making sure like your security system is still working and all of that, you know, maybe there could be a plan to move out of Joburg. Maybe go closer to his sister. I don't know. I'm not sure where his sister is. Maybe his sister is in not as much of a better place than Joburg. I don't know. Because um, not just Joburg that's, that's, has um, safety issues. Um, so, I mean, everywhere kind of does, but I don't know, maybe there's somewhere else that she can go. I don't know. Um, like I know Cape Town is far away from Joburg. It's not close. Um, from my understanding, from what my boyfriend has told me, it's about four or so hours away. So, um, maybe she would feel a little safer. I, I honestly, I don't know. I don't think Cape Town is as bad, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure there's somewhere else they could go that's maybe a little safer, but I don't think he would do it. <laughs> so the main thing is I don't think he would do it. I don't think he would agree to it. I think he would think like my business is here. That's part of the problem. He has a clientele. Moving away wouldn't be an easy thing. So I guess we will see, but um, that's it for Holly and uh, Wayne. So let's move on to the kicker of the episode, which is Danielle and Johan. And I have lots to talk about. Oh boy. All right. So let's move on to it. Let's go to Danielle and Johan. So... It's been about a month since they um, did the life coaching. 
She tells us that, you know, he got a job with his nephew, collecting debt. And she says, you know, all was going really well until she uh, opened up her bank account. And she saw a charge on her bank account for $40. And this charge was a withdrawal from an ATM machine. She says, I don't usually go to an ATM machine, which I totally get. Either do I. Um, it's not unusual because I'm like, okay, yeah, I don't do that either. Um, so, you know, she noticed this. And when she noticed this, she noticed that there were other withdrawals from her account. So she asks him about it. And he says, no, I didn't do it. I didn't do any withdrawals. She then says, okay, well, then I'm going to have to go to the bank. I'm going to have to ask to see their video surveillance to see who was at, like, who they might count. And then he apparently kind of just, you know, slams his hands down on the table and is like, okay, I did it. Um, and, uh, yeah, she says he was acting like such a dick. <laughs> entitled, like he had a right to her money, and she told him to get the fuck out of her house. He said no, so she picked up her shit, went into their room, and locked herself in there. Okay, before I even get into any of this, before I get any further into this, let me say this. If my man, if any man that I have been with, thought it was a good fucking idea to take money out of my fucking account, lie to me about it, even more so, me and you are going to have a little bit of a problem. Don't fucking touch my money. Ask me first. Chances are, I probably will let you take the money if it's there to take. Like, are you kidding me? Where's the where are the where is the lines? And it's listen, if he fessed up and said, Yeah, I did, this would be a very different conversation. But the fact that he said no and then confessed just goes to show he's sneaky as fuck. And everything that he says moving forward is bullshit. Even if it's true, bullshit. It's absolute bullshit. I don't believe a fucking word that comes out of his mouth. I just don't. Fuck it. Now the one thing I need to I need to ask, and I'm sure everyone else is thinking, why does he know her PIN number? He says that her card is just left lying around. Babies left there for emergency purposes only. And I am curious if there was an emergency. <laughs> because he has to have access to her to her account in some degree. And I would think having her card readily available to him. The pen number he knows that's interesting like i don't understand like you shouldn't be giving him that information however that doesn't take away from the fact that even if he does know that information even if it is readily available to him he should be not going at her account all willy-nilly as he so pleases number one number two even if he needs something out of it you should be asking first if he is not able to get the permission before, at least then let her know, hey, babe, by the way, I just took some money out of the account. I wanted to buy some food. You know, I just want to let you know so you're not surprised by it. Where's the fucking communication? That's why I don't believe fucking where he says he's being sneaky as fuck. That's what I think. He's being sneaky as fuck. Anyway, let's continue. Let's move on to what he has to say. So, he says that she went on a, on a retreat and he had no money. I thought you were working. How, how could you have no money if you were now have a job, she says. And you say you pay for all this shit. You pay for the rent. You pay for the electricity. You pay for all this stuff. How do you not have any money? I don't fucking buy it. Anyway, she had no money for food. Um, and there was no, and there, there was no food in the house. So he saw her bank card. He says he knew the pen and he took money out without telling her. Um, 
she apparently called him a thief. Th- th- yeah, I meaning the shoe fucking fits. <laughs> and if the shoe fits, lays that bitch up. Um, he says that we are a couple. Okay, he says that we um have our own separate accounts. And I- I'm gonna get to this in a second. He um. You know how it kind of sounds like it's always been that way. So he it says that um, she leaves her card on the table, and he knows the pin. So he, you know, just took the money out. He says um, it was two thousand pesos that he took out, um, and he believes. Listen, we're married. What's mine is yours. No, Johan, what's hers is yours. What's yours is yours. Let's be very fucking real here. Let, let, let me let me continue. So um he He says because um you cannot steal from your wife. I wonder if you can st- if she could steal from her husband though. Cause I, I honestly, if the tables were turned and she did this to him, he'd lose his fucking shit on her. Really and truly, he loses shit on her. So, here's what I'm going to say. I understand the whole thing of what's yours is mine and what's mine is yours situation because that is how it works in a marriage. My debt is your debt. My money is now your money. I understand that. I've been married. I get it. But you, there still should be some respect. There still should be some respect. I had... Um, me, me and my ex-husband, we had a joint account that we no longer have. We had a joint account and he would, it was technically fully supposed to be his account, but he wanted, it was his idea because I didn't ask for it. He wanted to have it joint so that I would have access to it as well in case I needed anything because at the time I wasn't working. So we did that. But whenever I, I would be careful with how much I took out because it's not my money. I mean, technically it was my money, but it's, it's, it's the money he worked for. He needs it for whatever he needs it for. I'm not going to just take it all willy nilly. But if I ever did take money out, I would always tell him I took some money out of the account. I needed to put something, I needed something or I need whatever. And he would always know. Even if he wasn't pleased with it, he knew and he accepted it. It was fine for him. But I told him I didn't just take the money out and just go off. Like I, I would tell him and I usually wouldn't take more than maybe 40 bucks at a time, but I would tell him. Um, so is this, you need to tell her it's a respect thing. <sighs> anyway. So then um, she comes out of the room and um, she says, listen, let's, we're going to talk now. So she says, first of all, I need a partner who is going to be honest and trustworthy. You took my card several fucking times and didn't tell me when I asked you about it. You told me no. That's a problem because, well, trust. And um, I don't trust you right now. And again, all fair things. All fucking fair things. You fucking lied to her. And took her fucking money. When you have fucking money. You're supposed to be working, sir, apparently. So you took this all goes back to the fact that he thinks it will get to it because he fucking says it. She, he thinks that she should be taking care of him and she's not going to fucking do that. And I don't think ever for a second, she said that she was ever going to do those things. Never. Danielle does not look like someone who wants to take care of a man in that sense. Does she want a young man with a big dick? Sure. Don't we all? don't we all um not a young guy but at least one with a big dick that'd be nice um but yeah it's like 
I get that. Does she maybe make him think they would move to the States? Yes. But then I think she encountered some issues. <laughs> and now she doesn't want to live there. But, um, yes, I do think that 100%. And there's no way in hell he doesn't know that she has, at this point, whether it's from her or he found it on social media, that she has some serious fucking nuts. Um, I think he does, but... I do, I do understand his frustration there, but that doesn't mean anything. Like, because, uh, anyway, let's continue. So he says that I don't want to be paying for everything. At least I think it's him that says this. Or she, she says this, that I don't want to be paying for everything. I want an equal partner. He then, um, points his finger at her. So let's jump into aggression here. It's very aggressive. As someone's pointing their finger at my face, I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? But he literally points his finger at his face and I'm thinking, oh, okay. All right. We're off to a great start. And he says, you want to humiliate me over 4,000 pesos. Sir, it's more than 4,000 pesos. Because if I'm in our understanding, if I'm doing the equation, 4,000 pesos is 40 bucks. You did more than that. You did more than that. Stop, stop with your nonsense. Um, she says, so because you, um, she says, because you lied about it. He says, I can, or she, yeah, she says, I can look it up and tell you that it's, it's more than that, first of all. Um, but yeah, I, I can, I can show, show it to you. And he says, okay, fine, show me. And she gets up and she gets her phone to, to show him. So she goes through everything and she says, this week, um, it was 2,000 pesos. Friday, it was two withdrawals, 4,000 pesos in total, is what I'm understanding, I think, there. Then another charge, and then another charge. Um, so I guess two in one week. Then there is three thousand more pesos here, and then another five thousand pesos there. Like it's on the same day, actually, I think. And then he's like, "Okay, yeah, okay, blame me for your withdrawals." And she's like, "The fuck?" She's like, "I don't go to the ATM. I don't withdraw money." Who withdraws money <laughs> nowadays? I know people do, but like, you don't have to. Um, she says, like, they're not my withdrawals. She says, you did this. She's on the 14th, the 15th, the 18th, the 21st. Jesus fucking Christ, dude. She says, you think I'm going to go to the bank every day? That's the next thing. No one goes to the bank every fucking day. To withdraw money. No one does that. Usually what I would do, and I probably should start doing it again because I, I used to do this and I stopped doing it, but I probably will start doing it again. When I would get paid, I would go to my bank, take out like 20, 40 boxes to have just in case. And, um, and I would have that. And I did that one day when I would get paid. And then that was it. So I wouldn't do it again for another two weeks or whatever. No one goes to the bank constantly to withdraw money like that. No one does that. Unless you're being fucking sketchy and you're trying to withdraw money while she is unaware that you're doing it. And if you're doing little by little, 20 bucks here, 40 bucks there, it's not going to be noticeable. It's probably not going to be as noticeable. Me personally, I would notice that. I would notice that because I'm like, where's my money? Because I'm very, always very tightly budgeted. I know exactly what I should have at what time. So I would notice it. But honestly, if it's like 20 bucks, like 40, I think I would notice easily enough. But if it's like 20 bucks, I probably wouldn't notice that right away. I probably wouldn't notice that until I'm actually looking at my transactions probably would have noticed that. So he knows what he's doing. 
He's figuring, let me get away with this while I can. Where's the money? I don't know where the money is. Anyway. Um, so she says in total, he did four withdrawals, totaling 160 American dollars. But she says, um, it's not about the money, but it's about the lying. Not only about both for me, but mainly the lying for sure. He says he did it because there was no food, um, when she left for her, um, retreat. Um, and she says, are you kidding me? There is a freezer full of meat and we have 20 pounds of rice at all times. And that's the thing. Rice does not go if we buy like the big bag of rice, which is probably honestly more cost efficient. Um, that shit don't go very quickly. That shit don't go fast. That shit lasts for a long time. So I, I believe her. And if you have like, there's no way that at any given time, there's no food in this house. So that's why I think like he wasn't using it for food. He wasn't using it for food. Maybe once, maybe he was buying food at some point, but I don't think he was using it for food. I just, I, I don't believe him. I don't know what he was using it for, but it wasn't for food. Um, so he keeps talking about the 4,000 pesos. This is our capacity because it's more than that. Um, and he says, why would I ask when you just say no to me? And guess what, Johan? That is her fucking right to say no. When it's her fucking money. It's her fucking money. She's allowed to say no. She's 100% allowed to say, no, Johan, you're not taking the money out of the account. And then you have to fucking respect it. Yes. Sorry. Like, I don't, I don't care. I mean, what she, what she says that she wouldn't have said no. I don't know. She might ask questions. I think that's also her right to do. Because, I mean, if my man asked me for money, I most times would ask, what do you need it for? It's not to say that I won't give him the money, because I will if I can. But she's, she's allowed to ask questions, and she's allowed to say no. Did you work hard for her money? No. Um, so, um, he then says that she is selfish. Oh, she's selfish because God forbid she wants to know what's going on in her fucking bank account. She's selfish. Is she selfish in certain aspects? Absolutely. Let's not forget, she is still a miserable bitch. <laughs> but I want her side with this. I hate him so much for making me have to do it. But I'm on her side with this. Don't fucking go through my fucking money and think you have the right to do so. I don't care if we're married or not. That's not your fucking right to do. It's, I don't, I don't understand people whose mind frames go there. I'm always so, like, I know, like, my mom's pin for her stuff. Um, because at some point I've had to take money out for her or, pay for things with her with for you know whatever reason so I'm, I'm i've been aware of that but i'm always so aware of this is not my money i gotta make sure we're on the up and up here this is her money and i have to be careful with that my boyfriend has taken my card before and gotten his hair cut with with my card and he's so fully aware. He told me, okay, this is probably how much it's going to cost and all of that. And, you know, whatever. He had full access to my card and he only played it within the limits. I've had my dad's card, same thing. Me and my ex probably did the exact same thing too. It's so far ago now that I can't remember, but we probably had the same situation as well. And we were so fully aware of, this is not my money. This is your money. And, you know, you have to be careful. I don't understand someone's thought process of taking somebody's money 
and just go off. Like, how dare you? It's so disrespectful. Um, anyway, so, yeah, so he calls her selfish, and, um, she says, I invested more in this relationship than you have. Okay, let's not do the tit for tat. Let's not do it. But she's doing it, and I expect her to because she is who she is. Um, but at the same time, like, I get it, but... No, let's, let's stay within the issues here, and the issues are he's a fucking liar. Again. Anyway. Um, he then says that you don't provide for me. Here we go again. <laughs> Sorry, you weren't fucking working at one point. Like, shut the fuck up. Um, anyway, yeah, don't provide for me. He says I buy my own food. No, apparently not. She does. According to you, $160 of her money paid for your food, sir. So, fuck you. Um, he says, I pay for the rent. No, you pay for half of it, apparently. He says he pays for the electricity. I don't know your life, but maybe. Um, he says, um, so don't fill your mouth with you do everything for me. <laughs> wow, what an asshole. Um, she says, okay, well. At the first of the month, I need half for everything that we pay for, rent, um, the bills, food, or whatever. She wants half of everything. You want to play this game? We'll play this game. So I want half. Um, and uh, she says, if you don't have it, then you can go to your mom's. You're not staying here. Which, just from a legal standpoint of things... You can't legally kick your husband out of a home or your wife out of a home. You can't legally do that. It's your home. It's a matrimonial home. You can't do it. Now, everywhere's different. Everyone has their rules, but generally speaking, it is a matrimonial home. You can't just kick someone out, even if they're not paying anything. And trust me, even if you're not married to somebody and um, you want somebody out of your house who isn't paying their way, it's basically just learn to mooch off of you. It's not easy to kick them out. It's not easy at all. Did you all watch The Worst Neighbor or whatever the fuck, Worst Roommate Ever, or whatever the hell that show was called on Netflix? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not easy. It's not easy to get someone out. Um. So, um, he says, well, the problem is, like, I can't just go empty-handed. Are you fucking kidding me? He's literally about to say, well, I can't leave every handed. If you want me to leave, I don't leave, but give me my money. So I don't have to go back home empty handed. Everything is how shit looks. Yeah, yeah, I was with this American girl and now we're not together, but at least I got my money out of it. That's not how this shit works. You don't get your money back for what you put into the home. You're married to a fucking asshole. Like, are you kidding me? I like with her. I was fucking floored. I'm like, are you, you're not serious. It's called cut your fucking losses and go your separate ways. And we can work this shit. Oh my God. I'll get to that in a second, actually. Cause I'm thinking you guys can work this shit out on the divorce, but I'll get to that. Um, so, um, he says, so yeah, if you want me to leave, give me the money. Um, that I spend here. She says, but, um, I paid for this apartment. And she starts laughing, um, about him and her in the moment, um, about him, like, wanting reimbursement. <laughs> like, this is not how this shit works, basically. She says, you can think, um, you can live here rent free. And he says, of course I can. Of course he can live here rent free. See, the one thing I'm going to say here is, Danielle, you wanted young, big dick. And you got it. You, you did get it. But now look at the shit you're dealing with because you wanted that young, big dick. Sometimes getting a 
older big dick or maybe even a younger small dick is probably better than this guy. He knows he he's he can get anyone he wants. All he has to do is pull his pants down and he's good. <laughs> you know what I mean? You can be like the ugliest person, but if you have a big fucking dick on you, like you're good. He knows this. And he got you. And now he is playing it all up. She is getting what she deserves a little bit here. It's hard for me to say that, but she is getting it. And no one should have to deal with it. But I mean, personally, me, I would have. Listen, if you wanted to fuck the guy at your hotel, fine. I would have done it. Who cares? I'm like, okay, let's do this. Let's have some fun. And leave it at that. Leave the big dick in Dominican and go home and be done. Like, oh my God. Anyway, um, she says, okay, well, that's not possible. And he says, of course it's possible. <laughs> she says, it's not going to work like that. She says, you, um, she's like, you haven't even paid for a quarter of what I have paid for in this relationship. She says it um, was different with you when you were at your mom's, but you got resources now, so use them or find another American wife that you can be dependent on. There are so many. I can refer you out. <laughs> I can refer you out. That was fucking perfect. Anyway, he then says, um, at my house, I was good. I didn't have debt. And then she kind of says, then go home then. You don't need to be fucking here. Leave. Get out. It's the end of you and me. <laughs> like, seriously. I was able to think of the fuck out then. He says, give me my money. And I will. And he says, let's go to the bank. Get me out my money. And she says, no. And um, I want you out of my house. And he says, I told you what you need to do. Now he's fucking bribing her. This is fucking disgusting. So here's what I was, I was going to say. She can divorce him. 100%. She can go back to New York Show the process there in New York. Um, and it's going to take a lot. It's a longer process when you're doing an international divorce. Um, I had to do it here in Canada with him in Jamaica. It's not easy. It's a longer process. But for me, it was a simple divorce because chances are um, he wasn't going to be asking me for any money. He worked. He took care of himself at that point. He... Um, you know, he wasn't going to do that to me anyways, because he was never one. Even like when he needed the money and he needed me to help him like that, he hated every minute of it until so he was able to get a job. And he immediately said, okay, now I have a job. So don't send me any more money unless I, I actually like need a little extra or whatever. And he never asked me for anything unless he really, truly needed it. So there was no worry there. Never once worried about him taking what wasn't his or trying to get me for money that, you know, wasn't his. That is not the case with him, with Johan. If Danielle divorces him, it's not going to be a simple divorce. They do have, well, maybe they won't have assets anymore together. Um, but this is a person who's going to ask her for, for money, for alimony. And he could, and he probably would win. Because she would be... <sighs> Yeah, he probably could ask. And she'd have to pay for the rest of his life or until he gets married to somebody else. So, um, she really has gotten herself into a serious situation here because there will never be a time where he is not going to ask her for money. And I think this also explains a lot about them not starting to have kids. I really don't think he wants to have kids with her anymore. I don't think he has a shit. 
I think he is upset that she can't have it naturally. I think he doesn't want to deal with this anymore. He's probably thinking if we put the money into the into this, then I'm not going to get that money. I think it all has to do. I, he doesn't love her. I don't think he ever did. I, I think he liked her enough. I think you know, the sex was fine for him or whatever. I'm sure he, you know, fine, all good things. Like I think he respected her at some point, but. I don't think he does now. I don't think he's ever loved her. I think it was always about money for him and status and looking a certain way of having an American woman on his, on his arm. And that's all it is for him. He doesn't care. He does not care for her. And we know this is going to get so much darker as time goes on, but, um, the storyline, but it's just, yeah. I, I don't, jump into things just because the sex was good, guys. Because that's called being digmatized. That shit fades after a while. So, anyway. That's it for Danielle and Johan. So, next time on, Kenny and Armando are meeting their potential new surrogate. Apparently, surrogacy is not um, common in Mexico. So we'll see a little more of that. But then um, we see the power going out in South Africa. And Holly is not pleased. And she says she doesn't want to be there anymore. She doesn't want to live there anymore. And she says this to Wayne, and Wayne doesn't want to leave. Because South Africa is home for him. We'll, we'll see what has to be said there. Because um, I, I might have some things to say. We'll see. Surfer wants a kid question mark um and she doesn't see herself being pregnant again or having another kid let's remember rumor has it that she has two and then brandon's mom goes in on both mary and brandon about their relationship but that's it for the other way for for this week so if you like what you heard please rate review and subscribe to the podcast um and you can rate a review on either apple Podcasts or spotify and i have a new thing that i want to start trying and that is that every four or five star review that we get I'll read it on the podcast. So if you want to hear your review on the podcast, please rate and review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever you're able to rate and review. Um, and if you want to connect with us, you can do so by going to Reality Tea Times 2 on Facebook Reality Tea Times 2 podcast on Instagram or Threads, Reality Tea Times 2 pod on Twitter. You can also find us on Reddit at Reality Tea Times 2 pod. And uh, you can also email us at Reality Tea Times 2 at hotmail.com. And don't forget, you can find us on YouTube at Reality Tea Times 2. You can also subscribe, like, comment on there as well. We greatly appreciate that. And don't forget that I do have another podcast with my friend Mikkel called Next Take Podcast, where we talk about all kinds of different things. Um, we currently have... You know, this number can definitely change, but we currently have about eight episodes. Um, roughly, we've talked about all kinds of different things. We have a lot of fun over there. So please go take a listen to us over at Next Take Podcast, which you can find us at on YouTube at Next Take Podcast. You can also find us on our website, solo.to forward slash Next Take Podcast. And don't forget, we have a website, and that is at solo.to forward slash reality times two. And we also have a Discord 
And I believe that's reality tea times two as well. <laughs> so you can find us there. Um, but that's basically it. That's all of the stuff. Of course, everything here will that I've just listed will be in our show notes, all discount codes, um, special links to everything that we put in our ads are also in our show notes. And yeah, that's basically it, guys. Thanks so much. Bye. Have you ever thought of starting your very own podcast? Doing the research, I found something that would have made editing easy and seamless and makes the podcasting experience just that much easier. And I am talking about Ludo. This is a podcast software that I use for our editing of our episodes. It is amazing. It is easy. You're also able to get help from chat, doing chats and getting the information that maybe you just need a little more help with. They also have access to different articles that can also help you that have been just godsends for me. Also with the Ludo, you can create clips, you can do your ads, as thus like this very one I'm doing right now, and you can create your trailer very seamlessly just by the clicks of buttons. You can also use Ludo to publish your episodes just straight from the software. It's so easy. I highly, highly recommend it. You can get access to Ludo by using our unique link, which you can find on our show notes, just down there at the bottom at the show notes. And you can get access to an easy software.